Hi, Gwen. Hello. Thank you and welcome to my series, Important People. I'd like to explain that we've met here in Babylon, a jazz club where I saw you sing, and I instantly wanted to make an interview with you, which you graciously accepted, and I thank you for that. I guess my first question is, when you meet new people, how do you present yourself? I normally say, normally, I always say, that I'm a musician, I'm a singer, I'm a jazz singer. Sometimes I add silly things like, um, some people say that I'm a, a singer, and I think it mostly has to do with my for so long not believing that it was possible that I could engage in this thing that I love so much. As far as long as I can remember, I've, I would sing to the mirror and, you know, as a child and stuff and, you know, imagine, my, imagine myself on stage, you know, saying, oh, I can do that, you know, I'd love to do that and in front of a crowd. It's a way of my touching people and I get enormous joy when I look out at the audience and I see people, I can see the smiles on their faces or a reaction or something. Yeah, and I say, yeah. We're communicating now. And each time it's this, this circle. I take a lot of risk. I, for me, it's important. Um, it's, it, I, it's a challenge. I mean, I love that, that challenge. To, it's like you're, you're, you're searching for, for this thing and you don't quite know where it is. You know, there's a road, you're on the road, of course, but it's just like there are all sorts of things along the road that you can investigate and find. And yeah, and it's, it is a challenge. It's a challenge about what is, how does one define music? Um, or again, so many other things that are like art. So how does one define it? What are the, what are the regulations? Or does it fall within, does it have to be within this box here? Or can you go outside of it? But also I think, well, for me, I, when I play with sound, when I play with words, um, I'm, it, it's, it's, it's very much about trying to interpret something, each word, each note, and the relationship of the note to the word. Because a word in that song or in that poem is different if it's in another song or another poem. So you have to give it its personality each time. I'm going back to my list of questions that are more genuine. What is your oldest memory? It's good from childhood, of course. As far as it goes. Oh, it's an, um, an accident, a car accident with my mother. And um, I was probably, I don't know, about three or four. And I remember the accident. I remember standing on the side of the road. It was raining. And my mother was crying. And it was me and my brother. And that's, uh, that's, you know, as this image of my mother, I mean, we weren't badly injured or anything. I bumped my head against the, the screen. Oh, um, but you know, I could see my mother was terribly upset, her young children and, uh, that image. Yeah. And seeing her and then the rain waiting for the police to come and stuff. And how did you feel at that moment? I wanted to protect my mother. Even though I was a baby, I was like, I do like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm okay, I'm okay, well, I'm okay, it's okay, you know. At that moment, you became yourself a parent. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly it. What was the first job you imagined for yourself? The first job I imagined for myself? Oh, I always imagined myself on stage. That was... I imagined myself on stage, but that was an imagining. And I always, in a way, told myself that that would never happen. So there was that imagined thing that was my little dream. 
But on the other side, um, if anyone were to ask me what I was, I mean, I, I was just thinking I wanted to be an astronaut, an oceanographer. In fact, when I first started at university, that's what I was going to, I signed up to be, you know, to do oceanography, you know. So I wanted, um, it, it, it seemed, because it, it changed, it seemed I wanted adventure, something unusual. I didn't want to be a teacher or a nurse or anything. I wanted to, you know, fly to the moon or go to the bottom of the sea or something like that. That's what I... New territories. Your first encounter with death. There's death, um, which is expected. So my first encounter with death, in that sense, of, was my great grandmother. I was sixteen, sixteen, seventeen, yeah. And so, um, so yeah, um, that's a first encounter with death. But it's, um, it wasn't. I won't say that it wasn't sad, but there's this kind of realization that, you know, yeah, it happens. But then there's another kind of death. There's the death of, of when, when you realize that it, it can happen to you as well, when that's when, when death comes up upon you, when you, when you understand that it's, a, it's not just about your great grandmother, that yeah, it can happen to you as well. And that was my brother. I was 33, yeah, at the time. So, yeah, and then you kind of realize, oof. And you try to make sense of it and try to understand, and you say, well, why? And you seek answers, and at that point, then you see death. Death is, is becomes, become, because it's, you, as you said, you understand your own mortality. Do you have a definition for love? Mm. It starts with an understanding of um, your relationship to other human beings. That this understanding that we're all here together, that we're all part of the same thing. Um, that we're all moving along this path. So in a way, you, in a way for me, you, you start with that. And the love that you have is, is in this, this, this way of seeing yourself in someone else, of knowing that you are them and they are you in a way, that we share this earth's this universe and in a many ways what's good for me can be good for you as well is good for you and that this this it does what is good for when it becomes um that you see yourself as different from excluded from then it's no longer about love for me love is about sharing as in a it, Oh, it's about understanding that we're all on this journey together and our relationship within that, our community, our family, our siblings, our nieces. I mean, it's, it's, it, it just keeps spreading out. And if we understand the, the two things, to love yourself, and sometimes it means protecting yourself, sometimes. But at the same time, you can open yourself up like a flower to other people and offer certain ones. That's what, that's what music is about. That's what being on stage. You're offering something. And you immediately see if that there's a, this love that you give when you do that. You find that the people give it back as well. They, oh. And then you're nourished as well. It's about nourishment as well. You nourish yourself and you nourish others with love. What's the worst thing in the world? What bothers me a lot is, come on, when people 
are manipulated. I find that people have opinions on things that is based purely on things that they've heard and they have no idea that's true. Whether it's what you think of a group of people where you're putting um, an image, well, oh, Germans are like that, or judo you know, Arabs are like that, or Chinese are like that, or white folks are like that. Uh, these ideas are protective as well because you have to protect your people, your society, your family. And in order to do that, you have to create a myth about somebody else. Because then it makes sense what you're doing. If you had to explain humanity to an alien, what would you say? Creatures looking for something. Creatures searching for explanation searching for their own identity. Creatures who ultimately love and want love and problems arise when we don't. When we don't, sometimes out of fear, often out of fear. If you could go back to a moment of your youth when it was tough, what advice would you give yourself? What you wish you knew at that point? I would, I would tell myself that it's okay. You are who you are. Love yourself. Because really, no matter what you think, other people love you as well. It's just your imagination that they don't. It's important, I think, to fulfill yourself. And what does that mean? Because so many people don't have that possibility. Oh, so many people are just struggling to be just to live and and whatever it is that if you can engage in something that gives you pleasure and i think it's just this, this sense that you've and i i i i'm reluctant to use the word accomplish because it has this kind of sense of like, you know, I've done this and I've done this and that. But the accomplishment in the sense that you've satisfied yourself in whatever it is you're doing. Even if you write, you know, poems and poems and poems that no one sees but you. But you've done that and you've enjoyed every moment of it. And you might go out during the day and do something else, you know. I don't know. You know, work as a, you know, to make your bread and butter, you know, wash dishes in a restaurant. I don't know, but you've you've done something that gives that's given pleasure to yourself, that made your heart sing, and made you smile. You say, "Yeah, I did that." Performing brings me such incredible joy. At the end of it, I feel as if I've floated. I've gone off somewhere else. I've had the the pleasure and the been fortunate enough to engage in something, to have seen something, to have felt something. I always talk about the, the Big Bang. I hear music is like the extension of the Big Bang. I also genuinely think as well that um, being human is wonderful. You know, I, I don't want to have the sense, oh, you know, I, all I'm waiting for is to get, you know, to, to reach that state there and I want to say, no, this is, it's, uh, it's nice here as well. And to breathe and to say, yeah, this love that we talked about earlier, it's here. You don't have to wait till you get there. You got it around you already. Maybe that's the lesson. Let's clap for the end. <laughs>